This week on Maker Update, a candy spewing pumpkin, making a wig from foam, a ghost in the circuit, and cow costumes for robots. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update, the Halloween edition. Why not? I hope you're finding a way to have some fun with Halloween, whatever that looks like for you this year. In this episode, we're gonna see how a lot of different makers have tackled Halloween projects that are beyond the usual gore and scare variety. Let's kick it off with the project of the week. Check out how Brankly retrofitted this store-bought foam pumpkin with a candy dispensing turntable. This is an Arduino project with some 3D printing. The idea is that the pumpkin will regurgitate candy down the little mouth ramp when a trick-or-treater presses or stomps on the big red button. For the electronics, you've got an inexpensive Arduino Nano, some LEDs that light up and blink, a voltage regulator, and a driver board for the stepper motor that makes the platform spin. There's also a pair of IR sensors mounted under the dispenser ramp that detect when some candy falls out. Once this happens, the turntable stops and reverses a little to loosen up the next batch of candy. The whole mechanism is pretty smart. It's all 3D printed and fastened together with a few screws. It's made to fit inside a standard five gallon bucket. That bucket can then be placed inside of whatever prop enclosure you happen to have. What's really cool about the way this is configured is that there's a platform that can be placed over the dispenser section so that you can really fill up the entire bucket with candy. This way you don't have to go out and refill it over and over. The video linked in the show notes goes through the entire build step by step with links to everything you need. Frankly, here goes the extra step to make a PCB for this project, but you could just as easily get this done with a perf board. More projects on Tested. Jen Schachter has a new video up showing how she made this insane Marie Antoinette wig using cosplay EVA foam. If you're not used to seeing EVA foam cosplay projects from Jen before, it's because this is her first one and she knocks it out of the park. The first half of the video is just about the custom fit cap that she made because it's the foundation of the entire piece and holds it to her head without extra support. It was critical to get it right. From there, she creates the internal support frame, also out of foam, and then starts to layer and sculpt the outside of the hairpiece. It's an inspiring video with a lot of great tips to share on working with EVA foam. She also has a separate video sitting down with Adam Savage and Norm Chan talking about the process. Check it out. Also, Jiri Prow has a new video up on how he made this little circuit sculpture ghost. Jiri is using a 3D printed jig just to get the wire bends to be uniform and to be able to drop the tiny surface mount LEDs right where he needs them. It's so great to see him work on this in real time. My favorite part though is at the end where you see that he made another 3D printed tool just for removing the ghost from the jig. When it pops out and he puts the battery in, it's like magic. In our latest video, Robohemian Sarah Petkiss shows how she created a new costume for her Robo Baby, Noodle Feet. In past years, she's dressed Noodle up as a Minecraft Creeper, Deadpool, the Fifth Element, and a Scarecrow. This year, her robot is getting dressed up as Cow Utters. I don't know why this is so insanely perfect, but it just works. I can imagine that when you ask a cold angular metal robot what it wants to pretend to be for a day, a grossly warm, soft, leaky cow udder would be at the top of the list. It kind of makes sense. To make her robot kid's dream come true, Sarah went to great lengths knitting this double-walled pink fleece udder suit. Making a seamless udder onesie for your robot is harder than you'd think. Sarah explains some of the challenges in her video. I also love that she added the extra touch of putting wet sponges at the end of each leg so that the udders would leave a little squishy trail behind. It just makes me happy. Speaking of squishy, Kate from Tested squishes her hands into molds to create plaster casts of her hands for Halloween. What she's showing is a kit that you can get for under $20. To take it further though, she shows how to add bolts to the hand so that you can mount them on a wall. Plus, a great tip on using the extra plaster to make greeblies and other model making extras. Now for some tips and tools. Through Hackaday, I learned about this new software that allows you to CNC carve Japanese style sugite joints. These are a type of impossible seeming three-way corner joint 
that fits together like a puzzle. They're very difficult to make with hand tools, but with this software on GitHub, you can adapt several styles of this technique to your CNC router. Zach Friedman keeps cranking out useful videos. One of his latest is a what's in my bag style video where he gives you a tour of the tools and supplies that he keeps in his hardware hacker tool bag. One of my favorite bits is how his backpack includes a tool roll that flips down, filled with everything he needs to get to work on testing and soldering a new project. Last week I shared with you a new series by Scott Marley on programming LEDs using the Fast LED library. He's already added a few new excellent videos to that series, but there's also a whole other series by Mirabelle Jones out on the Hackaday channel. This one is also good and a little more beginner friendly starting things out with a circuit playground. Another follow up to last week, Billy Rubin has another quick video on Mesh Mixer. This time she shows how to use the free tool to fix holes on your 3D model, especially if it's hollowed out from the bottom. If you're prepping a scanned 3D model for 3D printing, this is something you'll probably have to do. And finally, Adam Savage has a great video on safety wire pliers. These are commonly used in military or aircraft applications for wiring bolts in place so that they can't come loose. After watching this, I went down a rabbit hole of safety wiring videos where these elaborate bolt to bolt wiring harnesses are made on jet engines. It's fascinating. But you don't need to be an aircraft engineer to get a thrill out of using these twisting pliers. As Adam explains, they're great for making armature wire for models or twisting electrical wires together. For around $20, they're hard to resist. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their video on wiring batteries together in series or parallel or a little of both. Depending on your project, you may need to beef up your capacity or increase your voltage. Understanding how to arrange and wire multiple batteries together is a fundamental skill worth taking the time to understand. If you need a place to start, this video is perfect. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any cool projects that you're unveiling for Halloween. You can get on the Maker Update email list just for fun. And uh, be sure to vote next week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.